When these fraudsters, these Sanctuary Bay fraudsters, were faced with lawsuits, who did these come artists engage to defend them against the claims of victims of their fraud? Once again, Barrow and Williams, Madam Speaker. So more and more legal fees for Barrow and Williams. I'm not, I'm not jealous, Prime Minister. I'm just showing you that when the FTC does their autopsy and they open up this cadaver, we will see, because it's going to be a long, lengthy autopsy when it comes to Sanctuary Bay, Madam Speaker, but you will then begin to see where the Prime Minister's law firm has its hooks deeply ingrained in this cadaver. Madam Speaker, when the fraud is unraveled, the FTC finds that victims have lost over 100 million US dollars as a result of this Sanctuary Bay real estate scam. And then the FTC appointed a receiver over the assets of the scam companies. And who do they appoint as receiver, Madam Speaker? Who they, they appoint to receive in this Sanctuary Bay scandal? Take a while, guess. Barrow and Williams. Madam Speaker, perhaps Mr. Ricardo Pelayo, and I don't mind calling his name, perhaps Mr. Pelayo can answer these questions for us. He's the former CEO who suddenly found millions of dollars to buy controlling ownership of the bank when he was merely a bank manager, Madam Speaker, up to that point in time. Where would he have found the millions of dollars to undertake such a transaction? Did the central bank give him a foreign exchange permit to purchase all those millions to buy the shares from Atlantic Bank when the, when the foreign reserve of the country is so scarce? Or was that transaction, Madam Speaker, a mere paper transaction? From Atlantic Bank, now Mr. Pelayo, who is bank manager, all of a sudden, he's not the owner. Is it a farce, Madam Speaker? Is it a front to cover up who are the real shareholders?